Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, because we are past noon on Tuesday. And I didn't anticipate I'd be brewing this week. But apparently alarm bells were rang at me last night when I got home and I had to shoot back and put on the HLT because we are running low on a few of our cask offerings and of course we don't want to be in a position where we have to pull them from stock. Well let me just turn this sparge arm down a touch. Uh, Fandy's watching, probably not see this very well. I don't get much in the centre of my mash either during the sparge, there you go, a better angle. But what I do is I maintain two inches of water above the bed. Now it doesn't normally spin that fast, but if you've got the two inches of water above the bed, then of course it doesn't matter where you're sprinkling because water's water and it's just gonna do its thing. Anyway, little digression there. We're brewing the proof of concept this morning. I overfilled the HLT. Um, this is why I need a new HLT, you see, because between the mash and the sparge, I need to fill it back up by a couple of hundred litres. And very often, because I don't have a water meter on the feed in, I forget to turn that valve back off again and it just fills it right up to 620 litres and then I only needed 450. So I've pulled that extra, well, I've pulled about 120 litres out here. The rest of it can stay in and we'll see what we do with that later on. But yes, uh, this is the first uh, itineration. Is that not the right word? Probably not. I've no idea what I mean. Um, of the new um, alterations to the recipe. So we've had to make some alterations in terms of the hop content to compensate for hop age. And then also the pH on the proof of concept for me was a little bit high from the lab reports so we've reintroduced a bit of lactic acid to help with that there on this particular beer I haven't changed the malt bill only the hops and the quantities therein but on the vacant gesture which we're going to be brewing tomorrow I'm getting rid of the wheat malt altogether two reasons one, to help with clarity a little bit. That wheat just does introduce a bit more haze on the beer and I'd like it to be a bit more polished. And two, it helps obviously if we go down the route of reduced gluten on that beer, which I'd like to do at some point in the future. And uh, we've replaced it with dextrin malt, or as you guys will know, Cara Pills. So you'll see that probably on another video. But yeah, to give you an idea, this is what has changed on this particular recipe. And uh, hopefully, you can pause and read that of course, hopefully these changes will take effect to see a slight improvement on the beer. I've noticed the proof of concept isn't actually where I want it to be on the bitterness and looking at the lab reports we got from the other week, we definitely were on the low side. So just changing one or two parameters at a time so we can follow it and we know what has caused the change rather than changing 10 things and getting a little bit lost in the results. So yeah, we'll just change the IBUs on the hops and that will be completely independent from the pH of the beer. They're kind of not that intrinsically linked. Whereas if I changed the malt bill and the IBUs, then there could be a perceived difference between the two simply because uh, we may be introducing more sweetness into the... You know where I'm coming from anyway. Now, it's a bit of a mess over here today because uh, I've had all the hops out to take the readings and do the hop age calculation and all that kind of stuff. But uh, moving on to another project, this has arrived this morning and this was a bit of an experiment really and somewhat of a necessity. The air conditioning in my car doesn't work, I don't really care, I don't go very far in it, but I have been talking about building my own cooling systems and I 
thought, well, you can't really buy F-gasses without an F-gas certificate. But if you've got a mobile air conditioning unit, such as the one in a car, then you can recharge them. And hey presto, I've managed to buy 510 grams of R134A refrigerant delivered to the door without said F-gas certificate. So we may be able to do some chiller building, refrigeration compressor, evaporator, condenser, all, all the lot. We may be able to play about with it without blowing ourselves up with propane and we could use 134A instead, we'll see. But I'm gonna go and recharge the AC on the car and see if it actually works. And if it does, then yeah, kind of two birds with one stone. Fix the AC and we can buy F-gas without an F-gas cert. Didn't really have a clue what I was doing, but uh, it's kind of worked. It took the whole canister, so it was hungry. But the AC in this car didn't do anything. In fact, it blew often hotter than the outside temperature. We've got 14 degrees there at the moment, and this is slowly ticking down. I've not got the blowers on fast, as you can see. It's just on, like, number three, relatively low setting. But the temperature's coming down. The only thing is, do we have another leak somewhere else? I've had this car for two years, maybe three, and it's never had AC, so, you know, has it leaked down to empty over all this time, or has there been a catastrophic leak which has caused it to never work? I don't know, simply don't know. I guess all we can do is sit tight and see exactly how long this AC lasts for on this particular charge. Maybe five minutes. The temperature's going back up by the looks of things. Maybe longer. Who knows? Time will tell. One thing I forgot to show you this morning. Pressure from yesterday's vlog. Not been touched, but we have started putting stuff in this side. Um, which knocked the PSI up on there to 60 PSI so that's with the pump pushing back on those plates but when we've got the valves closed or that one there actually and that one and it doesn't make a difference turn the pumps on and that stays as it is what we're doing at the moment is recirculating the wort so we don't get any stratification inside the boil kettle Ticking on to the last five minutes of the brew day now. We've just chucked in the five minute edition. Four minutes left. So I was just having a think. Uh, we've uh, got all this vacant gesture to label up over the next week or two. And then we've got some of this five pints bitter and some of the Planet Amarillo, Amarillo Ale that we made the other week. And uh, a lot of people have been asking me what's available on the website and are you going to get it all sorted? So all of your recipes are on there and on reflection because we're gonna need a lot of cask stock this year I've decided to take a leaf out of, out of five points actually and uh, what we're gonna do is probably reduce the amount of lines of can stock that we've got in so we're just gonna carry a core range like they do of maybe four or five and get rid really of all the other stuff that we're doing because we're carrying too many can stock lines i think and then off the back of that it would be handy because we have our core range we can start selling that off to some local wholesalers which will put us out there in the market to start us off with that little step into the big bad world again having had so many years off from it uh without having to worry about order fulfillment because at the moment we're running out of stuff because we've got that many lines going. So I don't know if you've seen the website recently, but the past couple of days I spent a few hours over a couple of evenings and I've changed all of the product pages to now incorporate the 
the actual recipes. So you can download your recipe from the same page that you can buy a can of proof of concept from. So they're all gonna be like that. And then if the can of that particular beer isn't in stock, we'll just move that product across into the recipes category rather than the cans category. But you'll still be able to obviously buy the recipe even if there's no cans in stock which means on off the back of that a lot of this stuff up here in here for instance I want to get rid of some of this this is all mainly can stock in here and uh, I want to free it up for cask storage so I've put a load of beers on the website boys that are absolutely cheap as chips some stuff going for a pound a can just to get shot of it I don't want to sit on it through the summer I don't want it to get to the end of the summer and then it's starting to reach its best before and then I have to kind of chuck it away. I'd much rather chuck it on the website for real cheap. So have a look. I mean, you'll be able to pick up a case of certain lines for 24 quid. Worth, uh, worth a peek, I reckon. Oh, well, that's my cue to start chilling. So let's get the plate chiller. In operation. So I like to cool down the plate chiller before we put any product into it first. That's happening nicely. And then what we'll do is we'll start circulating around the tank to bring it down to 80 degrees for our hot stand. You watch that. <laughs> right, we'll chill it. Just turn the condenser flew off. We'll give this 10 minutes. We'll have to wait till it gets down to 80 degrees C. And then we can add these beauties. Oh, I wish you had smelly vision, boys. I wish you had smelly vision. Here we can see the temp drop. Relatively rapid. And it's probably at this point we can start to collect this hot water for tomorrow's brew day. finishes off the day folks so we just had a little uh, corner no not corner end cap to weld on there and while I was at it I put on a couple more little steel hooks to hang these RJT fittings on you can hear in the background I've got the CRP pump circulating and I've got finished for 621 so I've just been doing this while I was waiting for the for the cleaning to finish up and made some improvements I'm just going to hit this with a flapper disc in a minute and then I'll show you around it so this is the first time I've used the welding table uh, to do anything uh, anything proper I guess so I'm going to chuck must remember to turn the gas off though because I'm not 100% sure on that John Guest fitting. Right, I'm just going to clean this up and I'll show you what I've done. So quite simply, it's a pump trolley which I think you saw me make about a year or a year and a half ago. And it's not perfect. There are end caps missing on bits like that. But you know what? You know what? It's stainless. It ain't going to rust. So I don't think they actually need filling in. The only reason I filled this top section in on this corner is because you naturally want to touch it there, don't you? So I didn't want people cutting themselves on the end of the stainless. Everything else is all done though. So we've got a little box with a plug socket. So we, if the pump fails, we can just change the pump out without having to hardwire anything and just plug it in. And then we've got an on and off switch so we don't have to reach down to the one on the pump. You might not think that's a big deal, but trust me, when you're doing things in the brewery 
at a fast pace, just little things like that can make everything run just a little bit smoother. And then on the front, I've popped a couple more spanner brackets, if you like. That'll be helpful because we did have them all piled on the end of these two on the end here, which never really worked. And then we can either stick that one on there or we can put that one on there. And then this can be used to just hang the ends of some houses that we've got. And I might actually weld just a couple on this side as well, just so we can hang, you know, the ends of the uh, camlock fittings would be ideal. There we go, that's another job done. So we keep moving forwards, don't we? Keep having fun. I did want to play with a welder today for some reason, so I just got stuck in with it. We made a brew, proof of concept, in the tank, up there, tank black. It says 20.6 degrees, where that's floating at the top. It's taking a read in mid-tank, about here. And that's at 19.6 degrees. And the gravity isn't far off either, it's saying 1040. I made it 1040 as well. Caustic the tank, that's ready for a rinse tomorrow morning. We've already get, got tomorrow's grain in the mash tun, ready to rock and roll. Just need to weigh out the water chemistry. Sometimes I'll put it in the day before, and sometimes I don't. One of the reasons I don't usually is because the calcium chloride is hydrophilic, so it pulls moisture out of the air, and you can come to it the next day sometimes, and it's just a big solid lump. And I assume that's not going to dissolve as quick as the fine little chips that you've got out of the bag. So there we go. I'm finished. I'm going to go home and I'm going to crack open a bottle of something. I don't think I've got much beer at home, actually. So I might have one of those five pints best that I've got on hand pull there. I've not got through it yet. It hasn't cleared up at home. And I don't know that's because I've faffed around and put it in the keg and done things a little bit differently. Or... It's just not going to clear up. It's cleared up at the pub. Well, it was also the last out of the fermenter as well, so it could pull a considerable amount more yeast and sediment through than the whole, than the rest of the batch, you know. But that's it, boys. I'm done. We'll see you on the next one tomorrow. Big meet this weekend, so it's going to be exciting. The other guys who are coming down will probably get more footage than I will. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.